Hello and welcome. Hello, that was a little section of Llwynon, the Ash Grove. Many of you know that by profession, I'm a professional harpist. My name is Sean Ed Williams and I'm passionate about the harp, but I'm not only passionate about that. That is, has been my means of earning a living and I've loved it. But I also am crazy about other things. I take a great deal of pleasure from many sources. So today I'd like to share my enthusiasm for an interest which really started when I was a child. But an event in 2017 brought me back to it in a way I wouldn't have dreamt of. I was playing at the Royal Albert Hall in a BBC prom concert and I realised that something wasn't quite right. It quickly was discovered that I had a detached retina, which I have to emphasise in most cases can be successfully treated. However, in my case, after 14 months, during which I had four major operations to try and save the eye, each operation promising signs of real hope, Sadly, at the end of that period, I finally did lose the entire sight of my right eye. I fairly quickly made the very difficult decision that I should leave my wonderful position as principal harpist of the BBC Symphony Orchestra for some 28 years and concentrate on solo work, including performing, teaching, giving master classes and researching. That period of time initially was excruciating, to say the least, and I had to find a way of thinking differently and working out how I could move on in my life and stop myself from becoming low in spirits. I could, of course, still play the harp, though I had to make some adjustments. So I embarked on and celebrated several interesting musical projects, and I was delighted to become an honorary research fellow at the Royal Academy of Music. But I also felt this was a chance to finally explore some of the other opportunities which I had no time for as a person with a crazy professional life traveling the world playing the harp. So I started to purposefully walk and at the same time I began taking photographs on my iPhone. Rumi, the great Persian poet, said something I think most appropriate for those who is with McArdles. Whether one moves slowly or with speed, the one who is a seeker will be a finder. So before I say any more, please take a look at a few of the photographs I've taken since 2017. Just look at them, reflect and enjoy for a moment in silence, after which I'll show you more during which I'll also chat to you. Why walking? Why photography? As a child growing up in North Wales, I used to walk regularly, mainly with my grandmother after school and at weekends with my father, who regularly tickled my neck with long grass as we walked around our village. Even then, I loved taking in what was around me. The sights, the sounds, the aromas of nature. I remember the seasons, spring being my favourite, with primroses, daffodils and woodlands full of bluebells. But hurrying to find the first after Christmas snowdrop was also thrilling, poking its little head up through the wintry snow. Then checking for bees in purple foxgloves at the height of summer and crunching my feet among the red and golden leaves in autumn. Everything was heightening my senses and I chatted away, offering murmuring some silly made-up little poem 
or thinking up descriptive words for writing up later, as I'd been encouraged to by my grandfather. My family, one sister, my parents and my maternal grandparents, had moved to the village of Sartin in Cluid, North Wales, from the more industrialised Shotton on Deeside, because I was a very sickly child who couldn't walk well, and this new home, Creed the Rawel, Cradle of the Breeze, was nearer to the two Welsh schools I would attend, a Skolkland Ravon and a Skolmaisgarmon, both in Erwydgrig, better known to some as Mould. I was aware that my walking was very different from others and that I had to stop frequently, that I couldn't keep up childhood tag or skipping games, but I still wanted to walk and I loved it and I relished being outdoors. I was 38 years old, a full-time professional harpist, when I was diagnosed with McCardle disease and I was told to take it easy, perhaps not even play the harp anymore. After the initial breakdown and panicked, I realised that even if I was to have a shorter life, one full of mystery and pleasure was worth far more to me than a longer life of inactivity and the constant loss of live performance. So I carefully manoeuvred along my path and carried on performing and teaching, walking, reading and writing poetry, crafting and being creative. And my McArdle's diagnosis was now over 30 years ago. I believe the childhood passion for walking in nature nurtured the enthusiasm which has been reignited in me. And I have found a love for reflection and visualization, dwelling on words by poets, especially the Persian poet Rumi. I'd like to share some of my thoughts about the walks and photography, which you, uh, to share it with you and tell you what I believe I derive from all of this as a person with McArdle disease and only one eye. We all know that with McArdles we're different and we can't walk at a normal pace, at least until we have been able to utilise our second wind. But we also know that we must regularly exercise in order to keep our bodies in good shape and improve our ability to be able to cope with all our symptoms. We have all had regular times when we tried not to show to whoever we're with that we're struggling and we actually need to slow down or stop completely at this point being unable to utilise our glycogen. The mobile phone which entered our lives some years ago now, now became a useful tool for those of us in the cardinals and a great way to pretend you're on the phone and have to slow down or stop to listen to it, trying to lessen the embarrassment, hoping not many people notice that we're having to stop for physical reasons. But I started utilising my phone in a different way to look more carefully at what was around me and I chose to start taking photos on the now almost daily walks, which I love. I always start walking on the flat so that I can warm up um, around the area of my home in London, which is surprisingly beautiful. So green and lush and varied. I'm the simplest photographer ever, as I only use the usual photo feature on my iPhone 6 with never any alteration. Even after I've seen the photo on screen, with me, it's what you see is what you get. Initially, it was point the camera like this or like that and just see what happens if sort of thing. And when I looked at the biggest screen at my photographs when I went home, I've been quite satisfied. This was never meant to be anything than a pure pleasure and also a form of therapy. But it is personal. I firmly believe that anyone who has a lifetime condition such as myocardial disease, which requires constant vigilance, and daily consideration of many our daily activities, need to learn coping strategies. An individual with many different lives, careers, family situations, we all have to do whatever suits us. Depression seeps in when we realise what limitations we have despite our best efforts to act normally. I've been in the fast lane of a performing life at the highest level, but to the outside world, hopefully, most people wouldn't suspect I've had a problem. We also know that with any major disability, such as McArdle's, any additional health issues can exasperate the whole story. I have several other health issues, yet here I am, 17 months away from being 70 years old, and making the most of my life in my way. I'm deeply grateful for the ability to think creatively, so let me describe my photography a little. I don't expect others to see what I might in capturing something, 
I don't want to walk imagining what I'll find, as I love to be excited by whatever happens to me within my sight. I do take time thinking of taking a photograph because with Mercados, I can't hold my arms or hands in any slightly awkward position for a very long time. Yeah, even despite being a harpist, I have to be quite snappy. As most of us cannot crouch either, and I'm always scared of getting into a position I can't get out of, I can't always get exactly what I want. I've learned that I need only to move a tiny bit to lose some things I don't want in the picture, such as a person in the way or maybe some unwanted litter. And I mainly take nature uh, photographs without people or animals. It's the same with photographs up under the trees or the sky, which I actually like doing. So I look carefully first, quickly decide, as one second can change the light situation completely, and then snap. I really wanted to capture a photo that I could look at afterwards and reflect on it. So I do regularly alter alternate my, my walks and how lucky I am to be able to do so. So that I decide if I want to be more within a forest, do I fancy looking at water and shadows today? Do I want streams, rippling brooks and lakesides? or a large open green space where I might look at the sky more. It might depend on the light and the weather. Then off I go. And by the way, always telling somebody where I am and I have a Find Me app on the phone. I carry water and often a light rain mark and only wear suitable shoes. We who've had the privilege of attending the Walks Over Wales courses run by the indefatigable Andrew Wakelin will have learned the rules of the road and I still keep his voice in my ear so I try not to take risks and then I'm happy. I see beauty in many ways it's not just the bluest sky with amazing wafting clouds or the purest most perfect rose. I see odd bits of wood and gentle greenery angles and shapes curves and symmetry. I don't worry if the walk doesn't offer a photo at all but in reality they always do is what you make of what you see. For me, the physical aspect of walking, taking in the aromas and the whole of my surroundings is better than any tablet or treatment in itself. It's a rush of energy, even if I have to snooze after getting home. It's a calming of thoughts. It's getting rid of whatever I have to do a moment ago, which always seems less important when walking. It's thanking for still being alive and still being able to take all of this in. Although it's good to think fitness levels, really for me, walking is mostly about the enjoyment. I don't like the rain, but I still rather walk in the rain than not. And as it's not easy for us McCardleites to do all the sporty activities, I'm happy I found something which is by chance good for the body and mind. I like the panoramic photos, but I do also dwell closely at a tiny bit of a branch or a single leaf, a shadow on the water, or a bird about to blossom. I marvel at the changing seasons, each one exciting me and bringing a different opportunity for capturing the essence of life. I think how nothing ever dies, it just becomes reborn. It's mystical. I've always had an interest in poetry and words too, especially those with, with, which portray emotion and use descriptive language, or perhaps make us look deeper into life. I try to capture the feeling I have when looking at my photos and then often I seek words to accompany them. I mainly these days use words by the great Rumi, 13th century Persian poet, scholar, theologian and mystic. To me, his undeniable wisdom and thoughts, thankfully available in several English translations, enhance my photos hugely. I've had a most surprising following on my Facebook page for sharing these and it seems that many derive pleasure for, from them. And if seeing my photos and sharing words can make one person's day happier, then I'm delighted and grateful. The photos here are not just from daily walks, but include some I took elsewhere in Britain, as I never leave my home without my camera. To quote Rumi, everything which is made beautiful, fair and lovely is made for the eyes of one who sees. Thank you, especially Andrew Wakelin, for inviting me to speak on this platform and for continued help. 
and may I wish all my McArdle's friends and all those in the AGSD a very happy 2022. And I hope that we can all meet safely in person as soon as possible. Thank you.